and measure from the bottom of the spar, just like in the blueprints, and measure where all those ribs are going to be located. The next step then is along the line here, and I simply connected a line between the two rivet holes that we had previously drilled on the other side. We need to have, according to the plans, four rivet holes inside there. So what I'm going to do is use my rib fan and come up with a uniform set of four rivet holes. And look at, talk about accomplishments, huh? This is the entire skeleton. Rib number one with the rudder horn. Two, three, four, and the five number tip rib. We'll say this is the most fun part of the whole project. I'll leave that up to uh, your decision. For example, now I'm going to place a rivet here. Now, obviously, we could rivet from this side or we could rivet from the other side. Since this surface will be exposed to the general public, we're going to place the rivet in this way. Inserted the rivet. I got the proper nose piece on the rivet gun, and I'm simply going to start and squeeze. It'll take about four squeezes to set this rivet. Here you're going to hear a pop, and guess what? That's why it's called a pop rivet, for heaven's sake. Who would have come up with that? As I rivet, I will remove the clecos and rivet as I go. Now is turn this over. And at this stage we're going to insert the skeleton inside and start getting things. And now we're going to simply line up our fan so that we get 40 millimeters between each one where all the rivets are going to go south. Well, I hope you don't mind. I turned it sideways just to make it a little more easier for me to drill, but that should finish up all the holes at a pitch 40 millimeter distance all up and down the spar. Well, that was the last rivet, so now I'm going to pull out all the clecos and fill up the holes that are left after pulling out the clecos with rivets, and then we can officially say we are done. Our rudder is finished. There's a few small parts that go on when we actually attach it to the aircraft, but essentially this is all that is necessary to do it. If you found that the building of the rudder was straightforward and relatively easy and you could accomplish all of the tasks that were demonstrated, then there's no reason to think you can't do the rest of the airplane. And how that rudder will look against the plane, and here's where it will attach. And it will rotate back and forth just like that. So what we have here are some examples of the various thicknesses. For example, what I'm holding here is called 16 thousandths. That's the, the thickness. That's quite thin. That's probably the thinnest you'll ever use in the construction of the aircraft. Here's the next standard thickness up. This is 20 thousandths, a little bit thicker. Based with which choice of snips to use, it all depends on which is more convenient for you to make the cut. Do you want the left side or the right side? to curl up because it's the smaller piece. Instead of trying to use a ruler and measure 30 millimeters across and try to get them centered perfectly between that, we have a very fancy tool here. This is a rivet spacing tool. It's fun to play with, 
but watch how that is done. Got the Clico, this is a copper colored Clico, and the Clico pliers. Stick that in there and I squeeze it. And the way this works is I go into the hole and into this hole right here. And that locks the two together. And by locking them together, I am allowed to then continue drilling the rest of the holes. And this, of course, when it comes to Clecos, there's basically three that we're going to use in our kit building. These are color coded because if you notice the black Clecos hold a diameter hole of 530 seconds or a drill size number 20. So these are essentially almost identical size holes. The copper color Clico. All right, here's everything you need to know about pop riveting. Basically, you're going to squeeze and the magic of the rivet gun is that when you squeeze, it's going to pull a plunger backwards. That plunger is going to grip the rivet stem and pull it in. Insert it into the gun. I'm going to take the piece now. And remember, we have all these holes along the way. I'm just going to choose one of the holes. I'm going to insert it into the hole and start squeezing. And then we'll take a look at what actually happens. And then about, you heard the pop. Let's take a close look at what actually happened and what we were left with. 